So I'm Kamea and I am a Fairhaven student here at Western Washington University and the Outback Assistant Coordinator now, the Assistant Coordinator at the Outback Farm. I am building a concentration in holistic agriculture and food distribution and I'm intensely interested in the ways that people gain access to fresh local and organic foods. So the first half of the degree is looking at how people grow their food in different ways. So what is conventional agriculture? How does that work? What is organic agriculture? How does that work? What is permaculture? And all of these different methods of growing and taking a holistic approach and pulling the best methods out of each of them because I think each type has something to offer ultimately with the goal of creating something that gets to the people that needs it so people have more control over their food and what they're eating and so then that goes into the second half of the degree where it's food distribution systems and that looks at the ways people are currently getting their food and their barriers to it so food deserts why do they exist how could we decrease that urban gardening um, community gardens aquaponics how could we create more gardens within kitchens and that sort of thing I started thinking about organic foods and uh, holistic foods about the time that we got our first CSA. My mom signed us up for a CSA in Boise, Idaho. It was called Peaceful Belly. And I just really loved going out to that farm once a week. My little sister was just an infant at the time, barely walking. No, maybe she wasn't walking. I remember we'd put her in the wagon and haul her up this big hill because they didn't allow any um, cars on the property. So the, the property and the farm was up on this hill and there was a big trail. So to get your food every week, you would park at the bottom of the hill and then as a family, you'd walk up this big trail through the farm up to this little farm stand and select what you needed. And I just loved it. Um, it was amazing. I started thinking about different kinds of vegetables and it was very different from what we got at the grocery store because before that, that's just what we did. I think I was 13 or thereabouts because Birdie was born at that point, so yeah, I would have been about 13. And then, since then, it's just kind of been a slow journey. I'm like, oh, well, why is this food at the co-op versus at the grocery store? And just started asking those questions and I always questioned my food. I went vegetarian when I was little and then I went vegan about the time I was 13, right after my sister was born, I questioned food again, and I became that uh, very active vegan and told everybody why they should be vegan and all the ecological principles around that. And then I, I'm not vegan anymore, but that's been, again, a seeking of holistic and what is real and what is organic because I started looking at the ingredients of my vegan products and what that meant and how much soy I was eating and where was soy being grown and I just continuously question the sources of my food and real food. So organic is interesting in that as a label, it used to mean so much more. It's sort of become a consumer tool. Right now, it means that the food that has organic seal is not GMO'd, and it hasn't been grown with pesticides or herbicides, but I believe that there are loopholes around that as well. When it started, the label was also supposed to encompass food justice, and there was an aspect of the label that said, if you had the organic certification, you also had to treat your workers fairly and they had to be fair, paid fair wages, but that sort of slipped out and that's become an entirely separate issue and an entirely different label. So the term organic has become sort of this consumer tool, but originally I think what it was supposed to be was this is what's real and natural versus this is what's not. When I started my journey as a student, I was studying marketing because it was easy and it tied into what I was already doing and I felt like I could I could do anything with it. And that's true, it's, they were good skills and I applied them to all my business endeavors. Um, at the time it was for the tea company, but as I went into it and I was at the farmer's market and I had our booth there, I started asking the farmers different questions like how does this grow, why does this grow, why do you sell this versus that. And I. Um, I think some of them appreciated it and some of it didn't, but it was when I started to realize that I had this curiosity around food again. Food has always been something of interest, but it, it was applying to my life very directly and very immediately again. Being with the farmers who grew the food and having that connection was very interesting to me. And then finally, one day when I was helping Rosalind of Rabbit Fields unload her truck, 
she asked me if I wanted to come out to the farm and help with the garlic harvest because she needed an extra person. And that was quite a moment because it never occurred to me that I could be somebody who farmed. It was just always something that everybody else did and as a business owner my job was to support the farmers. They were something separate from me and so then there was farmers and then there was me and for whatever reason her asking do you want to come out to the farm? I need a person broke down this wall that I didn't know existed. So I went and it was it's interesting because it's been a process, it's been a journey from the dainty person that I was before to this person who's taken more control and more ownership of my food. The first day on the farm, I showed up in my Nike running shoes and short shorts because it was hot and I didn't have my own pair of gloves and so I had to borrow a pair. I think I, I had my hair down, it was just like I was a mess and Rosalind was always so patient with me. She never made fun of me, but I do think she secretly laughed when I had my short shorts and I had this, this tiny tank top and I ended up with a, what's referred to as the stripe of desire where you're bending down in the field and your shirt rides up, but your shorts or your pants are low rise, so they go down and your shirt rides up and you end up with this stripe right above um, your backside that burns real bad, real bad. And it hurts, it's this bright red stripe. I, at the time, I found it really exciting because it's like, yeah, I'm earning my farm girl stripes. But looking back on it, I understand that everybody was kind of making fun of me, and that's okay. It's been a process, and it's toughened me up. Um, then from there, I got so excited, that I just had to go out to the farm again. I had to. It was amazing. I felt so strong and so capable, and it was so real. It was the most honest work I had ever done, and. So she asked me back again and I went and I that summer I worked off and on just a couple times so I helped with the garlic harvest and the garlic planting and the mulching and I think I also helped with potatoes but I'm not sure then that it was like a two week period I think total if I were to add up all the days because they were very sporadic but my focus was still on team my focus was still on marketing and then we went to the next year then the next year I helped her out for a good solid two months of a period of time and then this past season I worked the whole year and that was incredible as I finally came into my own in a sense and really committed to that which makes me come alive I admitted how much it means to me and how much that connection to my food and an organic lifestyle and how real that is it is the most real and honest thing I've ever done and so being there with my hands in the dirt and, and growing food for people is amazing. And I'll work for her again this year and I am now working at the campus farm and working on the coordination aspects so that hopefully I'll learn the management experience of running a farm so that when I graduate I can start something but I don't know what that looks like yet. I'm hoping to have something that's centered around education and increasing women's access to land. So that's a huge barrier for me as a young farmer. If I want to farm, I need land. And so there are bridges that have to be created on both sides of that equation for an organic lifestyle to become feasible. I think when considering these things, you have to go beyond organic. I think organic is a starting point, and it's certainly where I started, and, and the depth to which I engage with food and access to food and real food is kind of obsessive, so I don't recommend it to everybody. But it is only one aspect of the equation. It's one piece of it, and while it's important, I think we have to go beyond that. So we have to recognize organics, and what that means and recognize its roots and recognize its realness and how it has a place. But at the root of it, what we are seeking is a care for the ecosystems and the planet itself and our bodies and it's just more holistic than that. Um, organic is a piece of the system and I think we need to start looking at the whole system and all the different aspects of that. But that's, I, I'm getting the impression as I'm, I'm heading down this way that that's, that's going to be my life's work, is defining what that is. And so ask me again in 10 years.